I was looking online, desperately trying to fulfill my need to get something for free, and luckily I saw an ad for a propane patio heater and a lawnmower. Of course, I didn't care for the heater, but the lawnmower was what I wanted, so I jumped into the car and drove the 4 miles to get it. But once I got there and saw the mower in person, I hesitated to grab it. The reason why was because of its condition and all the bugs that were crawling all over it. How could anybody let it get this bad? In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Murray branded lawnmower, and the problem is that, well, first off, I just got it home, so I'm not even sure if it works, and secondly, the amount of ants and spiders crawling all over it is a bit disturbing. Luckily, I'm not too grossed out by the insects on this mower, but I really have to wonder, how can anyone treat their equipment like this? Now, I may have already fixed this mower in a different video, so if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. But before I fix it, I have to give it a quick cleaning, that way I don't get dirt in places like inside the carb, the fuel tank, or even inside the engine. While I clean this mower, I'm going to talk about something that I think is one of the most controversial topics next to why you need to bother changing your oil, and that is, what's the worst way you can store your equipment? Well, maybe not the worst way, but that's what it seems like. Now, I've mentioned it before in other videos, but we're going to talk about the ways I've been made aware of, and specifically on how this one may have been stored. And if you hadn't guessed by the way this one looks, I'm using the term stored rather loosely, and a better way to describe this one would be abandoned. Now before I get too critical and before I turn up the sarcasm, I do want to at least check the fluids in this engine. That way I can at least figure out what kind of trouble I just got myself into and also see if I end up with any extra gasoline that might be salvageable. Now you're going to be surprised to know that sometimes people will fill the tanks up with fuel and not be able to start the mower and then just give it away as is so it's almost like getting a bonus. Now after removing the fuel cap, it looks like that might be the case here. However, just because it looks like gasoline doesn't mean that it is. We have to drain the fuel out of the tank anyway, so hopefully we'll get to figure out if it's still good, and of course, if it still looks usable, you know what I'm going to do with it by the end of the video. Now as for the oil, hopefully we'll get lucky with that one as well, but if the mower looks this rough on the outside, there's a good chance that they didn't really care what happened on the inside. Now shockingly, the oil is almost to the full mark, it's just too bad that it's not clean, but beggars can't be choosers, so I'll take what I can get. The next thing we need to do is to prime the engine and then try to start it. Hopefully it does something, otherwise I'm going to feel real bad about having put this bug-filled mower into the back of my car. So of course it's not going to start. That means we might have a fuel issue either related to the carb or what's inside the fuel tank, a spark issue, or there might even be something wrong with the engine. Now one of the easiest tests to do is to put some fuel into the intake of the carb and see if it starts. Now if it does start and run, we can confirm that the other two issues are not what's keeping this engine from starting. Luckily for us, the engine started and ran for a few seconds, so that means it's not a spark issue or an engine issue, so that only leaves us with a fuel-related problem. Now, if the engine did not start, we'd have to check for spark and compression, but I guess we'll have to wait for a different mower since this one did start. Now, the next thing that I want to do is to drain as much of the fuel out of the tank as possible and find out if it's still good, but this is when things turn ugly, and I mean fast. So, I'm going to use a gravity siphon to pull the fuel from the tank, and to start the siphon, I'm going to use my chemical bottle. Now, you can see that the fuel in the tube starts off being clear, but then for no reason, it gets much darker. Now, I happened to be looking away at something else when it changed over, so I didn't see it happen personally. If I had, I would have realized something strange had just occurred. However, once I was done siphoning, I picked up the jar from the ground, and that's when I saw this. So here's what was inside the fuel tank. As you can see, I think there's something else in the glass besides just gasoline. So what exactly am I looking at? Well, it turns out there was a lot of water in this fuel, and it settled to the bottom while the gasoline is floating on top of it. Now if I stir it up, you can see that it will not mix, but instead it tries to separate pretty quickly, which is pretty cool to watch. Now the strange part is that the gasoline looks very dark, like it's old mixed fuel. Now you can use mixed fuel in this engine if you really had to, the only thing it's going to do is smoke a bit, but the water is the real issue. Now I've seen water in the fuel system before, and typically it's only 1 to 2 ounces, but when it's a large portion of what's in the fuel tank, you really have to wonder just how does that much water get in there. I'll give you what I think the answer is to that question here in a bit, but for some consumers, it's going to be tough to hear. But first, I want to talk about the condition of this mower and how it might have contributed to its current condition. Now, when I saw the ad for this free mower, it looked just like any other mower I've seen online. It was a bit dirty, but nothing terrible. 
but once I got there and saw it up close and personal, I realized just how badly this mower had been treated. Well, that is my opinion of what I saw, but you may see it differently. Now, I knew it was pretty dirty when I picked it up, but it was only when I got it home that I got to see the full extent of its treatment. There were a lot of ants living on it, so I'm not sure where the colony was, but if I had to guess, I'd say it was in one of the tires. So how do you start an ant colony with a mower? Well, more than likely, you'd have to store a mower outside in the shade of either a tree or some sort of structure like a house or a shed. I've always thought it was better to put a mower inside a structure, but I guess being in its shadow is good enough then, or maybe I'm wrong. So that brings up the main topic for today's video. Does it really matter how you store your equipment because according to how this one was stored and how the fuel tank now has more water than fuel in it, it would seem that yes, proper storage is important and I'm going to tell you why. Now, if you didn't know this, when you buy one of these new, it's going to come with some instructions printed on pieces of paper, but there's so many of them, they have to bind them together so they don't get lost. Now, most people didn't understand what the purpose was for these sheets of paper, and most were just thrown back into the box and then thrown away. If you were one of the three people that kept it and read it, it would tell you the best way to store these machines, and most times, if you follow the instructions, you'd be given a personal achievement award, and a gold star would appear over your character's head for a few seconds. Okay, let's put the game controller down for a brief moment and talk about storage. For a mower with a plastic tank and a metal carb, it's best to put the mower away with an empty fuel system and in a place that's out of the elements. Of course, I'm talking about a structure with a floor, four walls, and a roof of some sort. So a shed, a basement, or a garage is ideal, but let's say that's not a possibility, then what? The next step down would be a carport or even a covered back porch, just a place where it has plenty of airflow and where it won't get rained on. And if it does get wet, there's plenty of airflow around the machine to dry it off. Now it's best if it's not in direct sunlight, so hopefully the carport has sides and the porch faces away from the sun, but it's not necessary. The main goal of storing it is to keep it dry. That's why when you get your mower wet, either after mowing wet grass or after washing it, that you should try and let it dry out before you put it up. So here's a good example. That Lawn Boy mower that I recently worked on that had a rusted out mowing deck was, believe it or not, stored in a large wooden shed. It didn't get rained on, it didn't get snowed on, so why did the mowing deck turn into Swiss cheese? The answer is pretty simple. They had a tendency to mow the yard when it was wet and then promptly put the mower away back into the shed with all that wet grass stuck to the mowing deck. Now, it did take a long time for it to finally get this bad, which is quite surprising, but could you imagine what would have happened if they had cleaned the mowing deck of the wet grass? I'd only imagine that the mowing deck would still be in one piece instead of looking like someone was using it for target practice. Now, the issue with this one is not a rusty mowing deck, but water contamination in the fuel, but is it from being stored outside? So here's something else you may not be aware of. During certain times of the year, there's going to be a lot of moisture in the air. And if it happens to condense inside the fuel tank with gasoline in it, that moisture could collect and migrate down the sides of the tank and make it to the bottom of the tank. And once that water is under the gasoline, it's going to be trapped there until the gasoline evaporates. Now, there are a few things you can do to keep this from being an issue. The easiest way, at least in my mind, is to run the machine empty of fuel. That way, if moisture happens to collect in the fuel tank, there's no fuel to trap it and it will evaporate away. The other way is to fill the tank all the way up to ensure that no condensation will form on the walls of the fuel tank. So am I saying that this mower was left outside uncovered for three to four years with a half tank of gasoline and that it's been collecting moisture all this time then? Unfortunately, no. For the amount of water that we found in the tank to get there, it would have to come from somewhere else. Now, if you have a fuel can that you take to the pump to get gasoline and it doesn't have a good seal on it, it could be the culprit that's collecting all the moisture. Of course, using ethanol gasoline doesn't help either since it has a tendency to attract moisture from the air. That's the main reason why small engines should not use ethanol fuel, otherwise this could happen to you. Of course, the other way water could get into the fuel system is if the water came from the gas pump, but unfortunately I don't have any proof that it did. However, aside from someone sabotaging this mower, there are only a few possible ways that this much water could make it into the fuel tank. And if you think about it, someone walking into this person's backyard and pouring a cup of water into their fuel tank it doesn't even sound like a good plan. So here's what I think happened to this mower. I think sometime last year they went and got fuel from a gas station, used it here and there throughout the year, but at some point they poured in the last bit of gasoline from that can that had water in it. That's when the water that had been conveniently staying at the bottom of the can finally got dumped into the tank. They probably then used the mower for about one or two passes on the lawn, at which point the water finally made it to the engine and caused it to stop. After failing to restart the engine, they gave up, went to the store, and bought a new mower so they could finish the yard. 
Now there is one part of the story that I know to be factual and that is when I picked the mower up from them, they happened to be in the garage. We then had a brief exchange and that's when they told me they had bought a battery mower to replace this one. The only thing I can hope for is that they take better care of the battery mower because from what I can tell about this one, they didn't seem to care too much about this one, especially once it stopped working. Now it's pretty obvious that this mower was kept outside exposed to the elements for quite some time, but I have no way of knowing how they cared for it before it stopped working. But if I had to guess, I'd hope that it was better than what this mower ended up getting. Now as you can tell by the build date, this mower wasn't all that old, and by the looks of it, they seemed to genuinely care for it because it could have easily been much worse than this. Unfortunately, they basically ended up with some bad gasoline, and that put this mower on the sideline, or in the backyard in this case, and that pretty much sealed its fate to be given away during spring cleaning. I did wish them luck with their new battery mower, and hopefully they end up being the fourth person to ever keep their owner's manual and read it. Now, I will admit that I'm not much of a reader, but when it comes to saving money on repairs and ultimately having to replace something that I didn't care for, you bet I'm going to read the manual. No, I can't really be too harsh on the previous owners. They could have easily taken this mower to the dump and the chances of saving it then would have been almost zero, but instead they posted it up online to give someone a chance to do something with it, and for that I'm very grateful to them. Now, if I really cared to, I could always swing by their place and make a friendly house call and see how their new mower's doing, but I'm sure that'd be really weird for them, so of course I'm not going to do that, and I'm going to respect their privacy. Oh, I did forget to mention the last way to store your stuff, and that is just leaving it outside. If you're not able to store your stuff indoors, leave it out in the open, in full sun, no shade whatsoever, and don't even put a tarp on it. That way, when it does get wet, it'll dry off, but with a tarp on it, it'll trap moisture and let it linger much longer than it should. I know that sounds like a terrible idea, just leaving your mower in the middle of your yard, getting rained on and beat down by the sun, but I hate to say it, I've done it more times than I can count to several machines that I've had, and nothing bad happened to them. Now, I didn't have any fuel in them, and I also had their mowing decks set to the highest position to reduce ground moisture from causing rust, and I'm happy to report they still look like mowers and not Swiss cheese. But to be honest, if all possible, keep your stuff in a shed, garage, carport, basement, or somewhere that they can't get wet and also stay dry. Now we can't all have a 3,000 square foot pole barn on a concrete slab to put all our lawn care stuff in, but maybe, just maybe someday, it'll happen. Oh, and if you're curious as to how I've been storing my own personal Honda mower, well it sits outside, in the elements, under a carport. And when not in use, either during the mowing season or in the off season, there's no fuel in the carb because I like to use that magical fuel valve that comes with most Honda mowers. So my question is, how and where do you store your lawn mower or the rest of your lawn equipment? I think you're going to be surprised by some of the answers. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.